Brett Tucker and uh, Vice President of Technology for a hosting and cloud company called Stratascan. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is the cloud, uh, more importantly, security in the cloud and why folks should be concerned about that. So, obviously there's been a lot of talk about the cloud. Um, you know, it's still in vogue, it's still in fashion, there's a lot of buzz going around as well as uh, security, and, and honestly there should be. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a game changer. I, I feel that it's sort of the next evolution of IT infrastructure. Uh, you know, going back from the mainframe days to the PC desktops, and now cloud. I believe it's a significant, significant change. So, there's also a lot of talk about security. Um, and there should be, I mean, the, the flexibility, the scalability, um, the ease onboarding of, uh, uh, of cloud infrastructure, are, it makes it very attractive, especially at a low cost of entry, cost point. But it comes with some inherent concerns, um, which uh, involves the sharing of, of resources and infrastructure. So there's a lot of, you know, I would say FUD, in the blog sphere and out on the internet and a lot of sensationalism about security in the cloud. Um, but it goes, it goes beyond that. Um, it's something that's very real. It's something that we're seeing you know, in, our, in our infrastructure and in our hosting uh, services today. Uh, for example, um, DEF CON, which is a major hackers conference in Las Vegas every year, there was a, uh, a survey done by a company called Fortify. It's an HP company. And they pulled a list of attendees at the DEF CON conference there. And an overwhelmingly 96% said the cloud uh, opened up new opportunities for them as a platform. 89% uh, said that providers today, cloud providers today, aren't doing enough uh, for security. And 45% of those polled said they had already tried and exploited um, um, vulnerabilities in the cloud space today. That's pretty amazing. So, you know, and it's something that, you know, again, we're seeing as well. So, you know, that sort of totally jives with our experience and some of the things, uh, you know, again, we've seen and then some things we've done to mitigate that. So, let's talk about the cloud for a bit. So there's basically two types, and you gotta figure out what level you need. Um, the more traditional cloud is, to, is typically shared, right? You have a particular environment, um, it's virtualized, you have virtual machines, you purchase um, a single virtual machine, and that's shared across other customers in that environment. Well, you don't know who they are, they don't know who you are. Um, some benefits are it's cheap, it's very inexpensive. Um, it easily scales, you can just put your credit card in, order more and more and more and more as you need, as your business scales. Um, but it's typically very hard to secure. Um, you don't have control of the actual physical equipment. You don't have control of the network. Uh, you don't know who's doing what. You could be doing things that are that are best practices for security in your environment, making sure things are patched and maintained. But the guy next to you isn't, and he's making the whole server. He's putting the whole network at risk and the whole server at risk um, because of that. And then the second type is uh, private. It's known as private cloud or dedicated dedicated cloud. And that's typically uh, much more secure. Um, the resources are dedicated to you. Um, you know, you know who's maintaining the box. You are your, your cloud. Your provider is. Um, you can utilize your best practices, and then they'll be maintained. Um, but uh, it's it's a little little bit more expensive. Um, it's also, it's just as easy to scale as the share side, but the onboarding process, the initial onboarding process, can take some time. It's not quite as easy to onboard as the, uh, as the shared model. So, what can be done? What can be done? Obviously, security best practices um, come into play, patch management, you know, uh, 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 making sure you have firewalls, or ACLs in place, and all the things that you know you would normally do to protect an IT environment. Um, uh, also, the infrastructure that the that the uh, cloud provider has, um, typically you want to employ in your environment. So firewalls, uh, some some cloud providers offer that as an option. I think you want to take advantage of that. Um, a lot of cloud providers offer intrusion detection systems 
um, as just a side benefit, obviously, and some even offer um, uh, IPS or intrusion prevention systems, which is which is a proactive way of managing managing threats. Some, but not all, employ uh, some or all three of those. So, what do we see at Stratus Company? We see that um, there's a lot of bad folks out there. There's a lot of people looking to do very malicious things um, using your environment or to your environment. So, either from a source, using your environment as a source, or to, or a target. Um, we see that uh, hosting providers now are becoming uh, more and more targets to be used as platforms, whole entire platforms, where um, hackers can come in and, and take advantage of um, the weak infrastructure of a cloud provider and use that as a sort of a base camp um, for whatever malicious activity. There's the, the, the poll at DEF CON, there was only about 12 to 15 percent said they were using uh, to using the exploits for, for for monetary gain, but that doesn't change the fact that it still brings down the network. Um, so the industry is focused on um, setting up detection. Everything's about IDS. Let's look at the traffic, let's find out what it is, and let's take care of it. But it's typically reactive, right? It's, it's good for forensics, it's good for solving the issue once the attack has occurred. It helps you uh, uh, mitigate the time that the attack is taking place, but it isn't proactive. You know, what can be done to make it proactive? So here's what we do. Um, a lot of the systems, the uh, uh, intrusion, detection, intrusion detection systems today, they look at it from sort of an outside end. The infrastructure is set up sort of a, as like a sort of a, a turtle topology, right? Everything's, everything's a hard shell around the outside to protect traffic from outside, malicious traffic outside in. But what if the traffic's coming from within your network? Hackers can easily, you know, gain access to credit card information, purchase infrastructure legitimately through the system, and use that as a base camp for outbound. Now, what happens if your denial of service attack or, or some other malicious activity happens from, in, from inside your network outbound? A lot of the a lot of the providers and a lot of the infrastructure set up today isn't. Uh, doesn't take that into account. So some of the things we've done is we look at outbound traffic as well. We use a layered, um, something else we do is we use a, a layered approach to security. So we have traditional firewalls, obviously, um, which you know everyone has and should employ. Um, we have intrusion detection, which again I mentioned earlier. And we also have something called a SEM, we call a SEM, which is a security event and information management system. And this, is, this is very uh, special, because what it does is, it looks at, it takes a deep knowledge analysis of historical traffic, and then it analyzes the data um, against patterns, and it makes it so it can be predictive. So now, it looks at the data coming in and says, okay, this looks like normal traffic, this looks like normal traffic, Look, this looks funny, the packets are smaller, they're more frequent, um, it looks like uh, the wrong protocol going to a different port, um, just, just funny business, and typically. And because of that, it can take action. So you can hook it up to an intrusion prevention system and it can, it can create ACLs for you on the fly to block sources, to block destinations. It can take uh, uh, great firewall rules on the fly, all you know, while we're asleep. So it can take about 80, you know, you know as far as the 80-20 rule, about 80% of the malicious activity can just wipe away. And you we slowly tune it for, you know, there's some false positives and tweaking that you have to do. Um, but over time, the, the system gets, gets more and more intelligent. What we also do is we take a wide and deep approach. So we sweep for enterprise level attacks um, with the understanding of the clients in individual environments. So we have a database obviously and keep track of the customer's environments, IP addresses, uh, you know, OS installs, things like that. So we can sort of profile them and see what is a common area for attack. You know, some customers might be Windows with SQL, with a SQL database, and that's a, that's a problem for attack. Some other customers might be running Linux with some other services on there that maybe be unpack, unpatched, which is also a target for attack. So um, we sort of profile and look at it using all the information we have at our disposal. 
We also do a little proactive defending our, of our customers. So what we'll do is we'll do um, regular vulnerability assessments so new customers come on board. A particular problem we have um, that we see is, you know, clients, they will, uh, you know, purchase cloud infrastructure and they'll set it up. Um, but they're usually deploying their applications or getting their things set up, and so what they usually do is they, they uh, leave things open, leave things insecure, and so let, let's get this thing going and then we'll tighten it down when we get into production. Well, by the time they get into production, it's too late. So what we do is we do proactive vulnerability assessments uh, for all the entire network. Look at, uh, you know, open ports, things like, uh, you know, uh, unpatched services, unnecessary services open, and then we notify the customers and give them a report to let them know or even call them on the phone and tell them, you know, hey, this is what we see, and we work with them to, uh, to uh, shut some of those services off, so patch them or just mitigate whatever, whatever the risks are. Um, also, uh, so we have a set of tools, and we, had a, we have this, this SIM, which is an intelligent management system, but there, is, there isn't a replacement for the human being. I mentioned the 80-20 rule. So the, the, the tools and the automation get rid of about 80%, but the 20% absolutely requires a human being. It, it, it requires discernment of the information by a trained, experienced security engineer to look at it to determine, is this traffic malicious, is it not malicious, and then take the appropriate action. So with all those three things in place, the tools, um, the, uh, the uh, intelligence systems, the automation, and the, the experienced security engineers all working together, that's, what, that's how we use it. That's what we utilize to, to protect our customers. So, you know, we feel that um, using these things, we're, we're sort of leading, leading the charge, you know, against the threats to the cloud environment. But it isn't because we're, we're, we're smarter, in folks, I think there's a lot of cloud providers out there, a lot of infrastructure uh, folks who are very intelligent, very bright people, and uh, it, it's just that, you know, through our experience, our collective experience, one at Stratascale, from past experiences, sort of collectively coming together, we've sort of learned from our mistakes, learned from what we've seen, both internally as well as externally, and use that to, uh, to, to, to help our customers and protect our customers. One, um, protect the customers from the outside world, from people doing bad things to them. Protect our own infrastructure, so we have to, as a corporation, we have to protect our, our information and our systems. And thirdly, protect, and this is, a, this, is, this is a unique one, protect our customers from each other. Um, that's sort of a unique, um, idea when we when we first got into and started hosting years ago, that was sort of a unique idea that our customers literally can do things to affect other customers uh, unbeknownst to them. So the fact of the matter is that um, the, the cloud business is booming. Um, cloud's here to stay. We love it. Um, we're excited about it. But so are the security threats. So there's always going to be a malicious activity. There's always going to be using cloud as a as a target or as a platform. And so, you know, I you know I wanted to give the talk and just let people know and let our customers know that um, you know what's out there and how they can protect themselves, just so they're informed.